Good evening, Bulldog fans, and it is a good evening after Mississippi State defeats North Carolina State 24 to 10 in a matchup of Power 5 teams. A week ago, Steve, we came out of victory, sat, you know, happy that they escaped with a win, but not exactly satisfied. I don't think there's a whole lot of complaining that we can do about today's victory over a very solid North Carolina State team. Yeah, and to that point too, David, I mean, Mississippi State is 2-0, and and this is one of those games a lot of people are on the fence about, even before last week's performance, we were wondering, hey, NC State, it's a Power 5 team, they closed the season really well last year, Dave Dorian has basically built almost a mirror image program, NC State's very comparable to Mississippi very. State, so we knew this was going to be a difficult game. Felt like home field advantage would be big, and it was. I think in the end, I think the environment, even though it wasn't a capacity crowd, the folks were here for very lively. But, yeah, it's a big win. And, and uh, you know, Dave, we look at expectations earlier in the year. We don't want to take a step forward. I think most of us figured this is a solid Bulldog Bowl team, not a team that's going to contend for the West, probably won't be in a Florida Bowl. But now you're one-third of the way there towards bowl eligibility and, and won a game that a lot of people didn't expect you to. As we talked about last week, if you let that game get away, you're chasing wins the rest of the season. You won. Now, with this win today, you put yourself, as you say, in solid position. You've beaten a Power 5 opponent, a good team in some ways, like you said, a mirror image, but a very physical team. I think I counted in their rotation too deep. They had 11 graduate seniors. And yes, they were playing a lot of sophomores, but those were guys who played last year. This was a very experienced Wolfpack team that was used to winning and you know, not all at all scared of playing an SEC team. The Bulldogs... There, I think there are two turning points, obviously, immediately off the bat. Any coach who kicks to Tulu Griffith gets what he deserves. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, and State needed to live. I think the crowd needed that boost to the emotional psyche a little bit, Dave. I mean, you know, you come into games like this, especially when you're, you're not sure what the outcome is going to be, and you get that big moment right out of the gate that gets the crowd into it. I thought it was big for State. Now, the first quarter ended up being very anemic offensively. State with his five offensive yards. And to be fair, NC State really had the better of things in that first quarter. Made a really bad play call, trying to run a gadget play. And Jalen Green stays home and you get the pick there. But, you know, State picks it up in the second quarter, had their most efficient offensive day. And then conversely, the defense holds them to 16 yards in the quarter, which allows State to separate. Yes, and my second turning point you just mentioned was a Jalen Green slipping inside of the receiver, a veteran receiver. Yes, a halfback option pass, and it's, he sold it very well, taking a couple of jab steps. He was right into that scrum. He had no room to run, jumps up and throws it, and Green holds his position against a guy who's bigger and stronger and is able to come away that pass. At that point, you could see NC State thinking, we're in for a long day. The dog offense did not cash in on that, obviously, like they did last week turnovers. But I think State's defense knew this game's different. This game, we know what we can do. Yeah, I agree. And I think one of those things, too, the State defense kind of kept NC State off balance. I mean, it, everything was just kind of herky-jerky, to borrow a Dan Mullen term. You know, it was just, uh, you know, they just never seemed to find any rhythm after the first quarter until the game had been decided. Really thought the Bulldog defense stepped up in the second quarter and the third quarter, that first drive coming out of the half. You know, you felt like if NC State could get any points there whatsoever, it would give them an emotional lift. But instead, State gets the big stand, and the next thing you know, it's a it's a 21-3 ball game. I think everybody at Davis Wade Stadium had a really good ink when they were going to go home happy tonight. Of course, my sidebar was about the defense, and I pointed out that the cornerbacks and safeties combined for something like 25 tackles tonight. And the cornerbacks had a lot of tackles, but not necessarily in pass protection. They were coming up quickly in support, but that's because the defensive line and linebackers were stringing out those sweep plays that NC State makes a living off of. They had nowhere to go on the corners. Well, I think Darcel McBath was a corner in the NFL that was kind of known for being a very physical guy that would come up and run support. So his guys are kind of in his same image. Martin Emerson with a couple of really physical tackles, a couple upended running backs. But Emmanuel Forbes, I thought he was a guy today because of the fact that he's playing the right cornerback position, and they love to run left. About 90% of their running production last week against UCF came off the left side. But you're exactly right. State stringing it out, but you've got to have somebody out there to, to, to set the edge. Emmanuel Forbes, I thought, really played one of his better games as a Bulldog. And as you mentioned, most of that wasn't in pass coverage. Now, to be fair, NC State did throw a few, couple of home run balls that had they, had they been a little less air put under them, could have changed the game in the first half. Point is, those balls didn't connect, and luck counts on a defense because, as Jet Johnson, who played a great game stepping in at middle linebacker for Nate Watson, said, 
it was because they had to throw because they couldn't run in the first place. Once you took them out of their game plan and made them throw the ball, you felt unless there were some bad breakdowns, you really had a chance to take this game if the offense came alive. As you noted, in the second quarter, late in the second quarter, they finally made something happen. And speaking of that, we asked Mike Leach about it too. I mean, Will Rogers had not been especially crisp in the first half. He got some things going in the second quarter, had a couple drops, but he also had some passes thrown behind. And you know, I, Honestly, I thought his accuracy was better last week, uh, but I thought he stepped up and really made some plays to really cash in late. You know, the fourth and seven play, I think we all thought they were playing possum there and that, you know, we're just going to make them burn a timeout or whatever, we'll pin it back deep so we can get in the locker room, but that's not what happens. You throw the, you know, basically the back shoulder – throw to Makai Polk and he makes an incredibly tough contested catch and that's a that's a money throw it shows a lot of confidence that Mike Leach has in his quarterback then you go right back and throw the fade to Malik Heath on the other side and he could not have thrown that ball any better so I think you're seeing Will again it's all part of maturation process but when the game is on the line and you're live without a net sometimes you got to go make a play and he made those tonight. A much better game for the offensive line in all aspects. It's still a couple of false starts, a hold or two. You know, some things at right guard still need to be settled down there. All the snaps were good, though. The tackles protected. Uh, Scott Lashley jumped the snap count one time. Although, to be fair, the defender was in the neutral zone when he did that. I think the ACC crew kind of missed that play, which set State back in a series. That said, the offensive line was much improved against a defense, which is very physical, not particularly fast, but very physical, and they held their own. And you notice, too, that the dreaded rush three, drop eight, once again, like last week it didn't work well, it didn't work at all this game. No, it, it didn't. And I, you mentioned the offensive line play. Yeah, Dollar Bill Johnson had an up and down night again for the second week in a row. And that's something you know that Mason Miller's got to figure out is, you know, we had some of the same issues tonight. We, we, he gets beat inside. He doesn't slide his feet over. So he ends up grabbing and holding. And so, you know, can the guy take coaching or not? You know, he's still a young guy, has very little experience, but he has the physical skill. And I think he has the want to to get better now. It's just going to be about getting them there. But the good thing is State has some options. If you can't get there, Cole Smith's a guy that's uh, more than serviceable as an interior guy. He knows the counts. He knows the checks. Uh, so, yeah, he could slide right in there too. And I think that gives uh, Mason the ability to kind of lean in and coach a little bit harder too. But, uh, yeah, by and large, the group did get better. But I really thought, David, where we saw him get better this week was in run blocking. Yes. I thought they really, really – controlled the line of scrimmage. And at the end of the day, when you go back and watch this game, I think what people are going to find out, Mississippi State beat NC State up on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and that's the mark of a good team. The thing is, they'll look at the stat sheet and say State averaged 1.5 yards per rush. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved in that, obviously, too. Uh, Woody Marks was probably not 100% this game. Dylan Johnson, now that's a good story, too, because last week fans were ready to give up him. We have a passionate fan base, and football certainly brings out those passions, but some of our snap judgments, whether we're media or fans, in first quarter, maybe we need to dial them back and certainly giving up on players so early. Dylan Johnson talked about going to church this week and getting some, his head together, and he came out and played a solid game. And really, here's the underappreciated fact of what he, and to some extent Marks, the, run blo the, the pass blocking by State's running backs is much improved this season too. It is, and, and so, David, we talk about having depth and how important that is. Last week I thought Woody Marks was outstanding. You know, it wasn't much of a factor tonight. Last week Dylan Johnson wasn't much of a factor, but tonight he's State's leading rusher and leading receiver put together a great ball game, and he set himself in post game. You know, he kind of challenged himself and kind of got back, got his confidence back, and comes out here and has a big ball game against a power five opponent. So, again, it's going to be a different hero every night, and that's what you want because you don't want to be a multi, you know, a, a one-dimensional team. You would want to be multifaceted and have other guys who can make plays. And I think State showed some versatility tonight with Heath and Dylan Johnson having good ball games. And let's tip the hat to another underappreciated dog by uh, many a fan out there, Austin Williams. Not only did he have a really clutch catch there in the second half, that punt return he made, I am sure North Carolina State had no idea he was going to run that punt back at all, much less as far as he did. Well, he's a fair catch specialist, but you know, because he is such a good uh, you know, guy with the ball in his hands from a possession standpoint, not necessarily the most elusive, but you know, with the clock winding down, yeah, you got to take a shot there. But uh, you know, I, I believe that Austin Williams is a leader on this team, and you know, he might not be the most athletic guy, but there's nobody that competes harder than he does, and I think that really showed tonight. 
tough night for Tucker Day, um, and that actually we talked about in the defensive story too. The field position wasn't great. The defense had uh, some challenges there, but he did hit one bomb. Fortunately, State didn't down and cover it and, and kill it at the goal line, but we've seen him. We know he can be a quality punter there. You survived a game where you made some mistakes like that. You, you won a game where your offense didn't dominate early and put a lot of points against a very good team. This was not a walkover game. This was a good opponent. State won it the tough way, and they won it in a physical, determined way, which bodes well for the rest of the season because they're going to face better teams down the road. Well, we're going to see a team in Memphis next week that likes to throw it around, and you know they, they have some of the same concepts that we have. It's going to be a different brand of athlete, but you know, anytime you go on the road, it's very difficult to win. But you know, I think Mississippi State fans now, I think there's a bit of a sigh of relief because, again, you've won a game. It was at worst a toss-up and I think most of the Bulldog fans thought you know we should win this game but if we lose it it puts us really behind the curve and don't give us any margin for error well now you've won it so I think you can exhale a little bit and maybe perhaps that'll clear up some of the traffic on the message boards and social media a little bit this week because State beat a good ball team tonight. And we love you. Please understand, we love you on the message boards out there. We would also love to have you in the stadium two weeks from now. Mississippi State host LSU. Whatever happens with Memphis, and it's going to be a shootout because Memphis put up, I think, 55 points tonight in surviving a game at Arkansas State. Good receivers. Uh, they throw the ball around a lot. An entertaining game in Memphis for those of you that can make it. Steve, you and Mike expect to be covering that game in the Liberty Bowl. But LSU two weeks from now, SEC opener. There are tickets available. Get on the boards tonight and buy your tickets. There's no excuse not to have a full house. The game time will be announced sometime Monday. We'll have a story on that when it comes out as well, ahead of Mike Leach's press conference. But make your plans because you see a team that, despite a lot of flaws and a lot of inconsistency, is now 2-0 against two solid opponents. If they can make it 3-0, you'll, they'll be ranked going into their opener in the SEC. So a lot to look forward to, Steve, and uh, we'll be talking – um, in coming days. I know you and Mike and Paul and Robbie will be at the press conference on Monday and a lot to get going, but it's a great time here. And by the way, uh, put it in a plug for uh, Dogpile. Yeah, brand new book. It's uh, pre-orders available this past week. Dogpile the book. That's D-A-W-G. Dogpilethebook.com and you can pre-order and uh, be released uh, early November. But the only way to guarantee you get a book, especially if you want one signed, is to order through the website. Dogpilethebook.com Because we can never remind people enough national champions, Mississippi State Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. And, and, and every time you say it, Dave, I get a little chill. So, <laughs> What do you think I do sometimes about this? It's good talking to you again after another Bulldog victory, and we'll be speaking again in the course of the week. Keep uh, tracking us now for all our coverage of Bulldog football, and now that baseball, uh, fall ball is underway as well, and soon we'll have some basketball news as Ben Howell and his bunch uh, start putting things together with practices for their new season. A lot happening in Bulldog country, and it's all good right now as Mississippi State defeats North Carolina State 24-10. First, Steve Robertson. This is David Murray.